um, what is y para? Uh, so, uh, you know, you probably have to explain the acronym, but why have you considered why only four letters? Um, there, I, I really like the thought process going into that. <laughs> and that's part of the, that's actually touched upon in the blog post. I'm not sure you covered it in the, in the lectures, but I think it's just really great to have something that's barely minimal enough uh, that it covers the, uh, you know, the, the span of everything that we organize our information. Because um, I think in past attempts, I know I have probably, this is a common experience. Uh, you try to organize all the things and then you have like 15 different categories to slot stuff in and you just get overwhelmed because you're, you're like, I don't know where to, where to put stuff in. Um, so the second week, week two is really about organization. Um, so that's what we're trying to optimize for. And that's what Para is. Oh, Christopher. Christopher says some of the mentors have modified the acronym SHOCK. What, what modifications have they said? I'm curious. Uh, if you can share that, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, so we're going we're gonna to get started. Uh, oh, let me also share an invite here. Uh, okay. Here. Here. Okay, all right, so let's, some mentors only have PAR or PA. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I will I say my, my A and my R are kind of merged. <laughs> Maria says Patara for tasks with a silent T. That's cool, yeah, because you do need tasks as well. And there's something I forgot to put in my slides. So I, I'll, I'll, um, I'll mention something here about your calendar as a to-do list. Uh, because I think I think that's pretty important. Uh, so let's talk about tasks actually. So uh, thanks for coming by, Maria. Uh, tasks calendar as to do list. Okay, all right. Um, that's awesome. Someone should blog about that because then you'll scoop Tiago. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to get started, and I'm going to try to keep the chat alive. Uh, this is a little bit stressful, as always, because I'm, I'm not used to um, such a big Zoom. Uh, but thanks for everyone for, for making the time on the weekend. Uh, this is the Notion Advanced group that I lead. Uh, it's Sundays at 5 p.m., as you might know. Uh, and it's a very developer-focused uh, meetup, meet because there are a lot of developers in BSD. But we do try to keep it generally accessible. Um, part uh, And just a, a I'm going to give an agenda this time because last time I didn't. So you know what to expect and you can jump off if you uh, if you have other stuff going on. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of content recap. I got very positive feedback from last week uh, about <laughs> about the, the little like, you know, what did we cover this week um, from my point of view? And then we'll talk a little bit about project versus areas. I'll give some extra content around what I think para is. Um, I don't have, I didn't modify the acronym. That's a, that's a very smart move. I wasn't smart enough to, to think about that. And then we'll just have a general Q&A. Uh, last time we went for 19 minutes. Uh, this time we'll try to keep it to an hour. But if we go over, people can leave. Um, I don't have anything else going on. All right. So uh, some housekeeping. The three rules that we have. Rule zero, because we start uh, <laughs> at zero in this house. Uh, stupid questions are welcome. Second rule, uh, often beats perfect. So don't try to do it right. Don't try to do the best. Uh, just do it a lot. And you'll find that you do more than if you try to do it best. Uh, and third rule, uh, this is a discussion, not a lecture. So I, I'm not an expert. I'm not, uh, and I don't have the right answer. Uh, and I fully, fully welcome people here to answer questions that other people have asked because I don't know the right answer as well. So it's a discussion that I'm facilitating. So that's kind of the, the framing that I want to set for this session. OK, um, so. Now into the content recap. Uh, I'm just basically going to pick the three best slides that I thought um, really represented this week. So if you remember nothing else from this week, hopefully you remember these slides. So the primary thing I think that, that everyone needs to get from this week is that completed creative projects are the oxygen of your second brain. In other words, action, right? Um, or what did someone say earlier uh, at the start of the at the start of the session? They said. Chris Florence said, um, where, what did Christopher say? Let me see. Christopher said, para is a methodology to organize by actionability. Basically like 
or optimized for taking action, nothing else matters. Um, and your system needs to help you get there. Your second brain needs to help you get there. Um, I like the metaphor of oxygen because without oxygen, your second brain is going to starve. And I definitely find that very true of myself. We all have stuff we haven't completed. And then we just reinforce this identity of a person who does not complete projects. Um, so the, the, the smaller your ambitions, uh, the more you complete them, uh, the more you have reinforced this image of someone who completes projects and, and you get more done. Um, this is para in a slide, <laughs> very ambitious. I basically wanted to summarize, you know, what the, the main aspects of para we should have. Uh, for those who might have missed it, I did share the, the slide deck so you don't have to screenshot or anything. Um, so I, I'm going to share that in the chat right now. But essentially, P stands for project area, uh, A stands for area, R stands for resource, and archive is basically uh, inactive, art, inactive items from all three categories. And uh, one of the key insights, I guess, is that it's arranged in order from more actionable to less actionable. And the other order that you see as well is that there are less projects and there, there should be the most number of archives. So I think if you saw Tiago's, um, so I think if you saw Tiago's uh, pre-recorded, actually, no, I think live session, he showed you his own Evernote where uh, he actually, you know, showed like the number of projects was like 5% of the total number of notes that he was taking and he had hundreds of archives. Uh, and that's the rough uh, order that you should be taking at. Um, you can, things can also move fluidly between categories. So you can, something can start off as a project and then broaden out into an area and eventually make its way to an archive, but it can also make its way the other way. So that's the purpose of this blue and green circle things that's going on. Um, and then finally, the, the thing that uh, he wanted to really drive home with the project list was that the projects should be con connected to a goal um, and a goal should be connected to a project. Uh, the project without a goal is a hobby and a goal without a project is a dream because you don't have plans to accomplish it. So that's para in a slide for me. Um, I, I, um, that's why I, I like people, I like asking people to summarize what para is because I think that's, uh, it's a very personal thing because it's the way you organize your information. Um, but I think trying to have a decent summary of what para is for other people helps you internalize it as well. Partially why I'm doing this mentorship thing. Okay. Um, so I think there's something, something that um, people have really tried to struggle with is the difference between projects and areas. That's something that Tiago mentioned, you know, in, in David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, he, he, like, he mentioned that the people can surprisingly have a lot of difficulty separating between projects and areas. So project has an outcome to be achieved and it has a deadline, whereas an area has a standard with no deadline, like, but a, but a standard, uh, you know, standard quality. Wow, we're at 50 people already. Um, okay, so uh, I just want to share people. Yes, uh, someone asked for the slide deck again. It's down here. Uh, but I just want to see in the chat a little bit. Um, this week, your homework was to figure out your project list and, and sort your stuff into projects and areas. Uh, what are some examples of projects? Oh, sorry, um, I, uh, I'm in the wrong meeting. Okay, that, there, I just shared the slide deck in the Zoom. Um, so what are, some, what are some examples of projects that you have identified for yourself? Um, if you can just share in the chat, that'd be, that'd be really great. I just want to see people's projects. And uh, I can give more examples if you want. There's lots of examples in the circle <laughs> chat. Um, but you can just pop it in the Zoom chat if you, if you want. Dennis says, uh, project is weekly podcast episode. Very nice. Emily says, tax filing for 2020. I hope you got that done because I think the deadline was tomorrow or Friday. Um, I, <laughs> I got my, I thought the, I thought the tax filing deadline was April 15th. So I got my deadline there. I think everyone should have a uh, <laughs> extension, automatic extension for, for tax filing. Sam Wong says crypto training and seminar. That's excellent. Excellent. So all of these have um, uh, defined deadlines, except for Dennis. Dennis has a weekly podcast episode. Arguably, that's not a project. It's not specific enough. It has to be this week's podcast episode. Uh, Yanni's project, very good. I was hoping for, for this one, and Kieran as well. Both of them want to complete BASB and have a functional second brain by June. Uh, obviously, that's something that we all hope to, to get you to at the end of the day. Um, Maria says once she wants to work on newsletter volume three. Peter Brace, Peter Brace has a very specific work related deal, close the deal with Sachin Beck. Uh, good luck, Peter. I hope you close that deal. 
<laughs> uh, got, I'm working on a couple of deals at work as well. And uh, uh, well, it's out of my it's out of my control sometimes. You know, you just once you've done all the paperwork, sometimes you're just meeting. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. Okay. Slow down is interesting, but an interesting one. Implement power for kids and power for family. So this is uh, another level of, you know, once you see, once you really internalize power, you want to do it for work, you want to do it for family, you want to do it for kids. Um, it's super interesting. Uh, just you know, take it easy. Uh, it's a it's a long game. Okay. And Christopher Horn wants to refactor notes to Zettelkast in by May sixteenth. Um, yeah, have a have a deadline, right? I see a lot of people with desired desired outcomes, but make sure you have a deadline. Make sure it's not too far in the future. Um, and if it's too big, uh, you got to break it down even more to something uh, achievable uh, because of the motivational factor of completing projects. Okay, all right, we're gonna take a pause there, and we're going to. Um, Oh, we do have a question from Sam Wong. I think uh, this is relevant to Dennis, the other person who wanted to do podcast. So Sam Wong's question is, how do you handle monthly tasks? Invoicing, for example, it is a project when it repeats. Yeah, so you have an area of responsibility, which is a, uh, which is a standard to be maintained, and it doesn't have a deadline that just keeps repeating, but it spins out projects every month, right? So um, that, that, is, that is one way to, to, to think about it. But obviously, if it's a task, like if it's if it can be done in one session, um, then it's more like a then it's less of a project and more like a task. Like you can, you can probably knock it out in like you know five minutes or something. Um, then yeah, that's that's why I think people when they establish a fifth category apart from P A R A, uh, probably the other one that makes sense is T, the the task category. So um, we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, but essentially, I just put it on my calendar as like thing I need to get done. Um, there's no point having a to-do list because the to-do list is very wishy-washy. It doesn't actually set aside time. Um, so you might as well use your calendar as a to-do list. That's the, <laughs> I'm giving away the ending there, but that's, that's really the conclusion. Okay. Um, I had some feature quotes from this, from this week. I thought this week was particularly quote worthy. I, I like collecting quotes. And in fact, if you notice in the circle community, there is a section just for quotes. And I think, uh, quotes can help you really crystallize some of the learnings, and, and that's why that's why I wanted to focus on some. But please feel free to share also in the chat uh, some quotes that you liked, um, or that stuck in your head. You don't have to get it precisely right, but try to try to remember some quotes because you're going to have to repeat them um, for yourself for other people. Um, so one thing I think people don't focus on enough is the importance of archiving. So this is why I want to feature this quote here. We cannot do our best thinking when all the information from the past is crowding our attention. That's why that archive step is so crucial, right? Um, th it's actually the first thing that he showed how to do in his live demo. The other thing, uh, this is very much in line with uh, rule number one, I think that we had. The value doesn't come from the tool, it comes from you using it repeatedly. So despite people really identifying themselves by the tool, right? Like uh, we are the Notion group, and then there are the other teams, the, the Rome group, and never the twin shall meet. Um, it's less about the, the tool because the tool will come and go. And it's more about just getting more use out of the tool. Um, same for blogs, by the way. A lot of people resolve to start a blog and then they'll they'll write the blog and they'll say like, you know, how I wrote this blog. Uh, the first blog, blog post would be Hello World, of course. Second blog would be how I made this blog. And then third blog post would be, sorry, it's been a while since I had last updated. And that blog will be less updated as of two years ago. Um, so definitely you don't want to have <laughs> that kind of thing where you overinvest in picking the tool and then you never use it. Okay, so and then uh, difference between projects and areas, projects of sprints, areas of marathons. So you do want to go for sustainability in, in areas and then projects. Uh, <laughs> Tiago says, give it everything you've got. Um, that may be a little bit, a little bit harsh, but uh, I do, I do definitely sprint a lot for, for some, some of my projects, which a lot of it's blogging, right? Um, but also when I published my book last year, um, I realized I didn't, I didn't introduce that part of myself. But uh, for those who are new to my group, uh, yes, part of the reason why this is an advanced group for BASB uh, is that I do definitely want people to ship um, and even make money from shipping. So if, you, if your intent is to uh, publish a, a video or a book, uh, something concrete from from as a capstone for this course. This is the right group for you, and I'm definitely open to questions about that. Okay. Um, finally, uh, a project without a goal is a hobby. A goal without a project is a dream. That's something we covered earlier. And completed pro creative projects are the oxygen of your second brain. So that's 
that, those are the quotes that I pulled out. Um, I do definitely encourage you to save your own quotes. <laughs> That's probably one of uh, my my uh, research areas or my my uh, yeah my my areas for for just like uh, collecting quotes. I, I do like collecting quotes and questions. Okay. <clears throat> um, brief reminder that you can also you share your stuff uh, here in in the project list um, on on the circle, and I think it's a very good motivational tool to check out what other people are, are working on and how to uh, how to see what's uh, what's happening there. <clears throat> okay, um, so just questions and discussion on this week's content in general. Um, I don't know if, if uh, people are, <laughs> if this is like your second or third mentor group already, uh, but if you had questions on anything that we just discussed on para, on like your, your project list and, and stuff like that, um, or your future quotes, uh, this is the time to discuss it. Um, so let's let's take a few minutes to talk about that. Um, what questions do people have? And you can feel free to unmute yourself when you do that. Volunteers, volunteers, volunteers. <laughs> um, gotta do some icebreakers, man. <clears throat> um, all right. I have a raised hand. What do I get? What do I see to get the? Uh, sorry, I don't know how to how do I, how do I let you how do I make you speak? I can uh, just start speaking if you want. Oh yeah, hey Chris. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, I'm, so I raised my hand on the on the interface, which I'm doing for the first time from an iPad, so I had to reach for it as well. Oh, cool. um, my question is, uh, you know, you were talking about uh, the value of what I characterize as constancy, the you know, the repetition, the rigor. Uh, that's my number one problem. And I don't know that I'm unique in that. Uh, there's always, I read somewhere that there's always this point when you're cultivating a new mental model or skill set or whatever, that works, it works, it works. And then all of a sudden the old way that you used to be rears its head and tries to pull you back in and then you fall off of it. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm wondering based on anybody's feedback here, what is the best practice around achieving or cultivating or keeping that constancy? <clears throat> Is there a reason you call it constancy instead of consistency? Because I'm weird. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's I read a lot of I read a lot of archaic texts, okay. and when I say constancy, I'm probably drawing from uh, Thomas Jefferson, which I was just reading this morning. <laughs> so I apologize. That's wonderful. I mean, hey, he's a good person to learn from, I guess. Um, does anyone have have thoughts on constancy? Um, feel free to speak up. Um, I can I can give some thoughts, but I don't want to take all the air in the room. Joseph, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, sorry. Uh, you need to form a habit which needs which takes around 60 days to form. I like that. Um, so a lot of consistency or constancy is about identity. I, 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 like this, I like this thing about identity change that James Clear has. Uh, so he has this like three circle thing. Um, we're, we're effectively doing some kind of behavior change. And this is, uh, this is effective for para, is effective for capture, uh, and the other habits that you're gonna learn in the other weeks of the class. Um, so uh, it's around your identity, right? Like, so uh, check out this, this I, I'm not sure I'm doing this right, but we'll open this image. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so check out this layers of behavior change idea. So there, there you know, so, Three shells to your model, right? Like so, uh, there's your appearance, there's what you do, and then there's your identity, how you how you think about yourself. So um, you can try to be the person who do who does like 100 push-ups in a, a row, or like you know do do para for 60 days. You know that's that's a very forced motivational thing. Like you can you can publicly commit to it. You can pay a charity and say like if if I don't you know if I don't complete this, I will lose some money. There are a lot of little tricks that really hack at the at the, the outward appearance of that. Um, the, then there's the performance, like the actual actions you take to, to ensure that you do that. So, so that can be like actually doing the thing. Um, so instead of saying that you do it, you actually do the thing. Uh, but the, the, the one that really sticks with you is identity change. Once you say, yeah, I am a person who does para, uh, for me, it's like, I'm a, I am now a BASB mentor, um, which means I, I'm someone who just like inherently, people can come to me now to talk to, to talk to for BASB advice. Um, that has changed the way I approach BASB because now it's part of my identity. 
and, and someone who identifies as someone who's, who's forming the habit, who's capturing, who's building a second brain, you don't need some trick. It's just a thing that you do. Um, if, you're, if you're a religious person, you just go to church. You don't have some counter of like how many times I've been to church in a row. You just go. Um, and if you, and if you, it's, it's okay to, to break it uh, every now and then, but uh, then you pick right, right back up again because that's your identity. Um, to me, that's, that's the most motivational thing. I don't, I don't need anything else, but um, Joseph, Joseph may have other thoughts as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Peter says, I prefer to keep my identity inconsistent so that it doesn't work too well for me. Uh, you, do, you are allowed to change your identity and uh, that, that, is a, that is a fluid concept. Um, so yeah, other, other forms of commitment may work as well. <clears throat> okay. Um, <laughs> hopefully that was a decent start. Thank you for breaking the ice, Chris. Uh, that was, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, I am going to, there was another question here, but I'm going to, I'm going to acknowledge, uh, Yanni who was, who had her hand up. Um, so Yanni, go ahead. There you go. Sorry. I muted you accidentally because the button changed. Yanni, one more time. Students. Can All you right. hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. Awesome. No, not a problem. Yeah. So I think it's actually probably can be a follow up of the previous question that Christopher just mentioned. Um, I think, first of all, thank you so much for sharing the identity part, because I think that's a big, I will consider as a principle that I can follow up, I, I can think of. But now the question is the implementation of that identity. I think I kind of think about the consistency aspect of the second brain comes down to the maintenance aspect. So I'm curious about how you maintain your second brain. Um, I used to just us unconsciously associate the maintenance as a reviewing process, it can be, but I'm just curious, um, you, Sean, as a person who creates a lot of value and, um, on a weekly or monthly basis, I, I'm curious how you're maintaining your second brain um, at the implementation level, yep. Yeah, <laughs> I knew I was gonna be asked this and I knew I was gonna have a terrible answer for this. So Maria, you might wanna say, <laughs> Uh, you might want to show your system in, in case uh, I, I fail and crash and burn, but I'm just going to be brutally honest. I don't do much maintenance. Um, I, uh, I, I do run, so I do have, uh, I have shown this in the, in the past preview. So uh, these are resources. So, uh, so I don't, <laughs> I started out with Para and uh, that was a year ago and, and things have evolved since then. Um, so part of, I've been told that it's actually a good idea to show people how para is used in real life, that it shows you that it's okay not to be perfect uh, because Tiago's, Tiago's is perfect, perfect para. <laughs> so, um, so I do have projects. Uh, one of them is BSV mentoring, for example. You know, uh, that's, uh, that's what we're on today. Uh, and I do have resources that I share. I do have special categories of resources. These are just uh, resources that I have for myself. Um, but for example, when I worked at Amazon, I did have public resources that I shared as a public notion. And I think um, sharing those as reusable resources uh, are, is very helpful because it's no extra work on your part, but other people might find it very valuable. And I do encourage sharing your resources. Uh, as far as maintenance go, actually, uh, the, so the other part of my system is a simple note. Um, I do a lot of uh, review on weekends. So every Saturday I do my newsletter and the newsletter helps me triage things as, as they come in. And that goes in from, from right to left, right? From simple note, which is my quick access thing that's always fast because Notion is kind of slow, uh, into Notion in the right categories. So that's really it for me, you know, in terms of maintenance. Uh, Maria, I don't know if you want to jump in and, and you have anything to, to add for maintenance. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I put something in the chat about uh, it just really depends on what I care about. So uh, my projects are maintained daily. And then I have a weekly review where I think about like the areas in my life that are most relevant. So it really depends on like what I care about now. And then um, I, I organize as I, as things come up. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's about me. That doesn't depend so much on how I do it in Notion, but it's like the mindset around that. I think it's a good idea to set um, like a quarterly or, or annual reminder to archive all the things. Uh, and that's something I haven't done. You know, it's it, just quite, quite frankly, um, I haven't done any archiving. I have just a, a mess of stuff since I took BSD last year. Um, so I really should archive it. You know, check out, check out this thing where I say old projects. 
<laughs> and I didn't really archive anything. <coughs> so it's a good idea to clear the deck every now and then. Um, and you know, just like Tiago says, don't be afraid about archiving stuff. You can, it's always it's still in the same system. You can always search it. Uh, Christopher says he archives annually. So uh, that's that's something that's that's good as well. Over, uh, visual overwhelm is, is a real thing. Um, all right, thanks, Yanni. Thanks. Good question for that. Um, uh, we do have okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer one chat question and then I'm I'm gonna get to you, Juliana. Juliana's next. Um, so someone had a question. Let's see. Um, let's see who. Julian says. Ju Julian Alvarez says. Uh, what weaknesses and drawbacks have you experienced uh, implementing Para, and how can those be addressed? So I think. Uh, a lot of people have has, have talked about the weaknesses, which is that it doesn't have any room for tasks, um, Julian. So the way that I think about tasks is that uh, <laughs> so I do have I do have a work to do list. That's a lot of my my stuff. Um, I do have <laughs> sorry. This is like the most overused of simple note there. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is like the right thing. I do a lot of speaking. So here's my speaking calendar. So I make sure I'm on top of my, uh, my talks that I'm recording and speaking. Uh, my blogging uh, kind of goes here. That's essentially all, all uh, I need in order in, for my personal stuff. My, my work stuff has a, has a different notion tracker, which I probably should not show uh, publicly. Um, but then I also have this I, concept of a, a, um, the calendar as a to-do list. So um, your calendar as a to-do list. So uh, I have written that up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share that in the chat. Um, but I do like basically this idea of time block planning that when you wanna get stuff done, um, attach it to a time, just sticking a to-do list without any notion of priority or um, amount of time estimated to complete is not enough. So that's, uh, that's what's going on over there. And does anyone else have like weaknesses of para that they've come across? I'll just leave room for one more response. Nope. Okay. Tara, Tara, uh, Tara is perfect. <laughs> I, mean, I am interested in the other, the other questions, the other uh, formulations of Para. Uh, I'm going to go to Juliana now, who also has her hand raised. Uh, hey. Hi. Do you hear me? Yes, I do. Right. So um, it's a question about archiving things. Uh, I started setting up my Para and I already have um, I already have a task management system, so I have a database with the tasks, and I started another database with the projects and another for the areas and another for the resource, and I I thought it was a great idea because I could um, link all the stuff and make relations like in the databases. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm having difficult. I sorry about my English. No, I am I'm having a hard time to archiving these things because when I try to move to another archive database, I lost the I lose the relations. Oh, okay, got it. So um, I don't know if somebody has the same problem and could help me and. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Great question. I have no idea how to answer this because I don't have a solution for that as well. <laughs> who um, who's got who wants to respond? <laughs> you can unmute yourself or you can answer. Uh, Christopher Horn says, I created a page in Obsidian that collects all open tasks into one master page. I put it into a template for my daily planning notes. Joshua says, uh, filter status of archive archive work. Okay, so you add a filter status, Juliana. Like basically add a filter. Yeah. That, that could work, but then yeah, I, I filter the task in duns, but like uh, the projects and the areas. Maybe like putting a filter might be good. Yeah. But then I, I wouldn't. Well, I I can create another another view of the database and just filter with the archive. Okay. Um, Joshua. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Josh, so Josh was sharing what uh, what works for for him. Uh, yeah, we we do use views at work. Uh, for what it's worth, Notion is our project management tool at work as well. So yes, views agree for that. Um, correct. Yeah. Um, but you know, in terms of breaking relations, uh, I don't actually know how to fix that. Uh, if you move stuff around, I don't move stuff enough to to answer that. Uh, I do like duplication. Um, so it's, I'd rather copy and paste than link. Um, but that's just me. I, I know that people like to link back and forth on stuff. Um, I think I think the backlink functionality in Notion is pretty good. So you can just say stuff like BSB uh, both, and then. This will have a backlink here, right? Uh, so if, if this is if broken links is something that you care about, then having that this is a new you know basically the the Rome clone of, <laughs> of Notion. Uh, you can you can establish backlinks, and if you move stuff around, I think this will this will be uh, always correct because they they identify based on the the ID of the document rather than its structure within the the note taking system. Yeah, Joshua says I like to avoid databases and just link pages with linking instead. Yeah, which means you can move it without them breaking. So maybe just don't use linking or use backlinking. Uh, that seems to be the answer. Filters are really good. Um, for what it's worth, Joseph, um, I don't actually recommend using Notion as like a read later app. So I noticed that Joseph, uh, Joseph says that he has a reading list in Notion. Um, I actually use, you can use Instapaper, you can use, uh, so I have uh, up next, this is what I have. So let me, uh, let's see. Uh, Let's just do that. Let's do that. So I have I have this thing. Um, I highly recommend people get a related thing uh, so that you can really focus, and you can see, you know, what your uh, your uh, your reads are. <laughs> I don't I don't even have this on on uh, on. I, I only read on my iPad. So whenever I come across a link, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll just like you know archive. I'll just I'll just add it to up next, and then I'll I'll read it on my iPad. Um, but you can use Instapaper, you can use some sort of read data app. Oh, okay. All right. Joshua has book notes. All right. All right. Um, so Juliana, um, hopefully that was good. I, I, I don't think it was like a perfect answer, but maybe Notion isn't like the best. <laughs> it wasn't really designed for that. Uh, definitely try to try to make more robust links that won't break. All right. Um, we'll, we'll, take, Thanks. we'll take one more question. Thank you. Take one more question. Um, Cameron has a has an interesting one. What kind of workflow automations do you use with if this then that and Zapier? Um, so this is about automations. Um, I don't. So who's got one? <laughs> I think I think the 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 read um, the read later crowd has a lot of FTT. Um, yeah. Uh, Paramvir, up, up next is not. Uh, the founders approached me and, and I'm beta testing, but it's essentially Instapaper. Um, it's got nice design. Uh, it's, got a, it's got a little bit of an AI angle to it. Actually, do I have? I don't even know. Um, yeah, no, so I don't even know how to, how to demo it. It's, it's just on my iPhone, I have to test flight. So it's not available to the public yet. Um, but let's talk about automations. Uh, who's who's got who's working on like if this then that or like um, uh, Zapier automations? So Joshua, I copy all my archive Instapaper articles into an archive folder called rain, with raindrop. Don't know what that is. Oh. Oh, all right. Um, I do have a my mind, uh, which is another my mind. There we go. Is this? Yeah, this is a bookmark manager. This is pretty good. Um, let's see more. Let's see more answers. Okay. Cameron says I created a zap so that every time I create a new notebook, it creates a new folder on Dropbox or G Drive. That's pretty handy. That's more backup. Um, Yanni says, I use IFTTT for Evernote, Instapaper, Pocket Highlight, Evernote goes to Evernote. Yep. Um, they are all going under inbox folder for me. Maria says, Google Calendar to Notion database with Zapier. Wow. Okay. Why, why Google Calendar? Like tweets to Notion. Wow. Okay. This is really good. Uh, 
I like I like this um, light feeds to motion thing. That's a that's a good idea because there's um, it's not intuitive to search your your own the tweets that you've liked before. So having that automation makes sense. The calendar one makes is unusual. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, so no recordings are not recordings are not shared. They're just for me to uh, review. <laughs> uh, we're we're not we're not actually encouraged to share as as mentors because. Um, it's a lot of work for the others, and, and then everyone wants every mentor to record. So, the company policy is that we don't share. Um, all right. So, all right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I hope. I hope that's that answered. I, I. I probably missed some questions along the way. Um, so I'm gonna leave those to the end. But I'm gonna go into some of the uh, unique content that um, I think when I think about. Uh, so you know we've we've covered some of these areas. Uh, I'm gonna go into a little bit about some other thoughts that I've had personally as part of this BASB journey. Um, so I'll just keep going. There's probably one other weakness, <laughs> maybe of the power content that we talked about this week, um, is that we talk a little bit about goals, but we didn't define goals, right? Like we talked about, where is it in here? Um, we said uh, P-A-R-A, there's no G here. And uh, G's are very important for projects. This um, and we didn't really talk that much about what um, what a what a good goal is. So I think uh, this framework, which I you 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 <laughs> you can't you can't go very far in the, in the productivity uh, canon without coming across smart, uh, is is a good idea for for thinking about your goals. Right? Does it is it specific? Is it specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound? Um, time bound is obviously the deadline thing, but uh, the other elements are very uh, helpful as well. I think the measurable ones, a lot of goals are binary. So like, did you do it or not? So in that case, it's, it's a very, it's very simple uh, measurement. Um, and I think the other one is attainable that uh, people really should think about. Like is if the goal is too big, then it doesn't feel attainable. It's gotta be something that's within reach. Um, so I think a lot of goal setting, a lot of smart goal setting is really just um, narrowing down the size of your ambitions. Like if you want to do something perfect or if you want to do some huge impressive thing, um, you may not have built up the muscle to do that yet. You might need to break it down into something smaller um, and just make smaller goals along the way uh, to, that, to that big goal. <clears throat> okay, that was the first thing that I, that I had planned. Uh, the second is for a little bit of the developers in the room because I like these analogies. Um, there's a there's an idea of normalized schemas versus denormalized schemas. Um, normalized is where you split everything into its most atomic categories, where you can sort of link things back and forth without knowing what how how you're going to need them ahead of time. Denormalized is where you put everything in a single object, um, where you where you know you're going to need it together. Um, so the, my assertion is that projects are essentially denormalized and areas of resources are not. Um, <coughs> So like you want to break stuff down into into distinct areas, whereas projects you often are bringing together content from from a few different areas of resources, um, and and synthesizing them in a, in a special way. Uh, Luke, I do have I do have shared that presentation. Uh, saw it here. Oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong window. Um, let me share it in this way. Okay, so uh, that was that's the idea about, about thinking about projects, and I, I do encourage actually just copy and pasting. Like if you have if you come across something useful, some some piece of content that's or, or some thought that's really useful, you can just paste it in areas and paste it in projects. So I do I do um, like the idea that you don't you know follow this strict idea of like you know one thing goes in one place. Um, I do do a lot of double pasting uh, of stuff, and um, that's just intentional denormalization. And the way that I approach this is, is what I call mise en place writing. Like you want to place everything that you're going to write about um, ahead of time in, in the place that you're going to use them. And this is independent of the areas and resources where you're, where you're collecting them. Um, so that when, when it comes time to write, you only write. Um, so all this happens um, asynchronously, serendipitously uh, as, a, as a pre writing phase. And then when you're writing, you're just sitting down and focusing on. Get, on converting all of this pre-work into the final finished product. Um, that's, I think, a sustainable way to uh, essentially reduce the amount of time that you spend researching and uh, ideating and, and uh, looking at the right references. Um, 
So, uh, oh, okay. I do have a do have a response here from Christopher Horn. Another interesting feature to add to the atomicity debate: denormalization. Yep. Okay. Yep. Agreed. <laughs> um, so I'm going to drop a link to this to this thought for people who this is specifically for people who write uh, blog posts as well as books. I'm going to show you a little bit about. So uh, when I when I say I, I do this, I really really take it to heart. This is the this is how I wrote my book for my BSB sort of capstone last year. Um, I planned out all the chapters that I was going to write. Originally, all of these things were white. Uh, and then I just slowly converted them into blue links one by one. But each of these linked to the issue where I just slotted uh, ahead of time the ideas and the resources that I wanted to, to talk about, right? Um, so that when I felt that I had I was ready to, uh, to compile all these things, um, I, I started from a good base of like these are the these are the points I wanted to touch on that I spent you know three months thinking about and collecting, uh, but everything was in its place when I you know finally wrote the, the final chapter and this is this is me writing it, um, and that's something I, I encourage people, uh, especially for people who are planning big books. Um, if you're working on for me, I was working on forty chapters simultaneously, um, to really think about just slotting everything in its place and and having like a mise en place attitude. Uh, to writing. So obviously this works for a book, but you can also think about it as working for uh, a blog uh, where I'm working on simultaneously, you know, 20 different blog post ideas. And uh, you should have some amount of idea velocity where you're thinking about all these things uh, at, at the same time. So yeah, um, I, I encourage you to, to try to denormalize for action. You know, at the end of the day, you are trying to produce output. And then you're trying to normalize for resources, right? So uh, when it goes to resources, I, I'm, I'm just slotting them in, in here. And you, you can do it twice, it's fine. You know, there's, there's no perfect system. If you figure out a way to automate it, great for you. I haven't got there yet because I'm, I'm, so I'm so busy and focused on producing. Um, okay, I, I saw a hand up. Um, I'm gonna ask you to refer, uh, should I pause? I've only got three more, three more, three more uh, topics that I wanna cover. So um, let's let's leave the questions to towards the end of this prepared stuff, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll come to you. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's talk about open source knowledge. So this is a, another developer analogy. Again, uh, if you're not familiar with open source knowledge, just think about the old school encyclopedias versus Wikipedia, and how Wikipedia completely destroyed encyclopedias because it was collaborative. Um, I, the assertion here is that resources should be open source. Like everything else in Para can be close can be closed, can be private, uh, but there's no reason why resources themselves should not be shared. Because as, as long as someone can benefit from it, then you you essentially win a friend while you're sleeping if you, if you just share it. Um, and if people can contribute, and that's the open source nature of it, uh, then, you, then you really benefit because they, they help to correct you or they help to ask a question or they, they actually just give you extra things that you may not have known about. So I really like that. Um, I do have a talk on this. Um, Called the open source knowledge talk. Um, I really should have added the link. Open source knowledge. Uh, all right, I, I'm just going to give you the slides. <laughs> uh, all right, that's my slides for open source knowledge. Um, but yeah, I think uh, when you combine para with learning in public, it becomes extremely powerful for building a brand as well as your uh, network at the same time. Okay, um, something that was briefly, very briefly mentioned in, uh, in Tiago's lecture, which I think is super underrated, is this idea of a brag document. So let me see where he talked about it. Um, so, so here, during, during, this is during one of the lectures that he had. And you can see, this is my, my own notes. I'm going through the course with you. During one of the lectures uh, he had, uh, this idea, th this comparison between projects versus areas, and he talked. He talks about why you need to connect uh, projects to goals. So there are three reasons why you need to connect projects to goals. Uh, you need to know the extent of the commitments. Uh, you need to connect current work to your long-term goals. But then the last part, you also need to know if you're making progress towards your towards your goal, right? So uh, this is this is something which I think is understated in terms of para, which is at the end of your project, you should. Uh, not just not just wipe it off, but actually uh, stick it somewhere in in a, in a brag document, in like a materialized view of the things that you've done this year. 
Um, and so that you can actually <laughs> review it because you're not gonna, it's, it's hard for you to remember them sometimes. Um, and uh, especially at work, it's, it's really helpful for peer reviews and promotion packets and stuff like that. Um, even for like the psychological pick me up, I think it's very helpful. <laughs> um, and personally, in when I work, uh, Slack is actually a Slack is actually a really good channel, for, uh, like a prototype channel for back documents. So I have, I have my I have a Slack channel with only me in it, and I just post in that channel whenever I finish something that I probably know I will want to review in my like 360 feedback session. You know, I'm like, <laughs> if you want to brag about yourself, uh, you need to be the best bragger of yourself because no one else is going to do that for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, Glenn, I'm going to get to your question in a bit because uh, we have one more slide left. Um, and that is <laughs> insert generic motivation, uh, just effing ship. Uh, Ira Glass's The Gap video is also <laughs> pretty common. Like this idea that, uh, you need to just just do it more, right? All this, there's all this theory, there's all these these um, images and, and advice. Uh, you just need to do it more. Uh, I like this parable of the pottery class as well because it's something that people say a lot, and I've referred to it as well. As far as I can tell, it never actually happened. Um, so it's literally a, a parable or a fable. Um, but anyway, just just do it, right? <laughs> and that's that's the that's a recap of of the, the kind of th the stuff that we covered uh, in in sort of the extra content section of this, this talk. So I'm going to head over to questions and discussion. Uh, we have a few. Uh, I did have someone raise their hand. So uh, now's a good time to raise your hand uh, for, for some chat. Uh, I'm going to answer things in reverse order so that I can keep on top of things. So Glenn G says, could you show how you share your resources in public? Was it making your notion public and people can contribute to it? Or how does the contributing part work? OK. Um, so Notion is not very co uh, conducive to public collaboration uh, because I think it will be a mess if people can randomly re uh, rearrange stuff. But uh, yeah, these are my these are my notions, and then and then I'll just share it in public. Um, so you can you're welcome to see my AWS Notion. Uh, but for collaborative stuff, nothing's better for developers than GitHub, right? So here is uh, my launch cheat sheet. So when I launched my book. Um, I took my notes as, as a resource and I, and I just posted it all up. And so, so you can see like, I didn't have that many contributors, but the people who did actually volunteered information. Um, and, and, for, and now whenever I need to launch my next thing, I have this resource available so that people can find it. So, um, hey, I need to do it, endorsements of testimonials. These are all the notes that I've taken for myself. Um, and it's useful for other people. Like so far, um, 500 people have started on GitHub. Um, so probably more people have seen that. Uh, and it's also a nice way to promote my own book. Um, so it's a, so it's a very, it's very useful thing. Uh, I do this a lot. Uh, if you go to my GitHub profile, you see the, the, the amount of the extent to which I have bought into this idea that you should open source your resources. Um, so I have done a launch cheat sheet, a CLI cheat sheet, podcasts. Uh, this, these are design resources. So here are my design resources. Um, this is the biggest one. 5,000 people have started this. Um, and it's just got things I use. So if I want, if I want to reference some typography, um, I can pick my fonts in a way that has been pre-vetted by people I trust because I don't know anything about design, but I can, I can look like I know by stealing from other people. Um, I can steal code. So here's a, here's a font loading strategy that some expert has approved. So I'm just going to steal that. It's essentially a swipe file and it's open source, so people contribute. So I've had 32 contributors so far. And yeah, it's just a really great way to have your resources open. So the work you're doing anyway helps to benefit you professionally. Um, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, I, th there's this concept that comes to mind called the friend catcher, uh, which isn't my idea, but I did. I do have the, the reigning Google search on it, I think. Yeah, I'm number one on Google for that. So uh, it's this idea that you should make friends online while you sleep by, by sharing these resources. So para, the R in para is extremely so super powerful if you just keep it up and make it useful, put a little bit of design on it. Um, it's great, so highly recommend. Okay, don't wanna brag about myself too much. <clears throat> um, Peter Brace, uh, wait, do we have any hands up? Um, hands up are prioritized by the way, because we want people talking. Uh, and we, <laughs> if anyone wants to put your hand up or unmute yourself and ask a question, now is a very good time.
Okay, Christopher Horn, let's go. Um. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry, uh, I had to unmute. Uh, my question is uh, going back to that French term that I am not going to try to say uh, that ends in the word place, I think. Yeah. Um, so we have two concepts that I, in my fevered brain, are in tension. One is the notion of normalization and denormalization. The other is that French term. And I, I guess what I struggle with, and you know, is if I am pursuing a philosophy of atomicity, which is to say that you know, you know where I fall in the normalization versus denormalization. The reason, that one of the reasons I'm doing it, is because there are ideas or concepts in my second brain that are not gonna feed just one projects, but might feed many projects. And instead of pulling them all into one place and associating them with one uh, activity, I might need to refer to them from two different directions at once. Does that make sense? Okay, so what's the question? Uh, how do you reconcile that tension? So it feels like what I understood you to say was that you pull all the resources into one place and you dedicate it to one task. And I'm just trying to reconcile that with my notion that there might be multiple tasks that need or projects that need to draw from the same artifacts, if you will. Yeah, I, so that's what I was saying. Like I, I do the lowest tech thing possible, which is I just, I double paste, like I'll, I'll, I'll okay. copy it out into the, the other place yep. that needs it. Um, but if you are a little bit more sophisticated, you can use backlinking. You can use uh, the Rome style of uh, linking, uh, two-way linking. Are you familiar with those? I am. Yeah, it's it's just a matter of are you uh, tolerating redundancy or are you just going to handle it by reference only, right? Yeah. So people really yeah. like charts. Um, I find them in practice not that useful because they're just pretty. Um, but but no, I mean uh, anything anything that's great. For, like ultimately, I'll tell you what's the best thing to link to a public URL that you blocked. Right, like, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we talked last week, we talked about the three strikes rule. If you reference an idea for multiple times, don't keep it to yourself. Just put it on your blog and then link to that. Fair enough. That's a good, that's a good note. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, just break down that idea that you're, you're, everything you blog has to be this like big thought leading piece or anything. It could just be a resource. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we had some other questions. Julian had a really interesting one that I want to address. Would you recommend using GitHub for open source knowledge that is not coding related? Um, so GitHub's really good because it has a really good collaboration model, but uh, it might not be accessible for people who are not technical. Um, Google Docs. So this guy, Frameworks works v0.1, something like that. Oh my god. This guy does such a good job. Um, I'm gonna read this to you because it's so it's so true. I realized that the main reason I don't publish as much content online is that I prefer to iterate my thinking continuously, making the bar to publish something extraordinarily high, or work around a shipping an alpha version of a thought. Uh, and then blah blah blah, he published his work in progress thoughts as a Google Doc. Um, and of course, he never actually published the final document. Like <laughs> that's how that's how people are in, uh, with their with their with their thinking. But uh, a lot of a lot of discussion happens. Wait, where's the where's the comments? Can you see the comments? Um, wait. Oh, he got rid of the comments. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, yeah. There's so much discussion here. You know, when you, you can write your you can write what you're thinking or researching, and you let people comment, uh, and that's a really nice way to open source it as well. They can't exactly like insert an edited suggestion. I mean, I think you could if you switch your mode. You can change your mode to suggesting. Um, but however you use some collaborative, collaborative thing like that, it can be useful to a lot of people because this one went viral. Look at the amount of discussion. It's still ongoing, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really great tool and actually you should use this more. It's, it's so simple. Everyone has access to Google Docs. Um, so there may be other tools. I think um, there, are, there are like collaborative notepads that are out there that I've used. If notepads, I forget the name of them though. Um, Deep note, no, pure pad, note joy. There, there are there are a bunch of these that, that you could try using, but there's they're just like startups, they're less reliable because they might go away sometime. So um, yeah, you can, you don't have to use GitHub. <clears throat> okay, more questions. More questions. We do have two more minutes. Um, who else has a question? Oh, we have a question from Parita. Hey. 
Um, hi, John. Thanks. Hey. Um, fantastic session. So uh, just a couple of quick questions, if you don't mind. Um, starting with a comment. Um, I, I think you do uh, speak very well. You have clarity of thoughts and it, um, it, it like the sort of the wisdom and the knowledge that you applied comes out very easily. So thank you for that. Um, I think I, um, I might have picked up that you took the course last year. Is that right? Yeah, uh, core 10. Um, right. So were you already using Notion at the time or um, did you, were you kind of in between a couple of programs and then you decided to work with Notion? Um, I, I, was, I was even worse than that. I was, I was using OneNote going in and then I switched halfway in the middle because I saw that most people were, I got, I got, I got frustrated with OneNote and then uh, I saw that most people were using Notion. So I jumped on a Notion bandwagon. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, because I mean, uh, right now I'm using Evernote, but um, uh, I'm just wondering if for, for folks who are more tech oriented or tech savvy, it's easier to establish themselves in Notion, but that's something for me to just try it out and figure it out. Um, but a related question, um, the book that you have published, which looks great, um, so I will check it out. Um, is that is that like the writing of it? Did you use Notion for that for most of it? I used um, I used GitHub. <laughs> like I, I just showed you, I just showed you the process, right? I don't know if you're here for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is for version two of uh, that I'm hoping to publish um, next in July. Um, but yeah, I, I used GitHub to draft. Um, I had reviewers come in, and uh, these are my editors that came in and, and gave me uh, comments. So this guy, I paid him to edit my work, and he submitted in GitHub. You know. Um, Elsewhere is great. It's a great experience. Uh, I used, uh, yeah, but like you know, drafting. I think uh, you can you can you can pull in your ideas wherever. I just happen to use GitHub. Like it, the tool doesn't matter to me just so much as like the process, right? Um, I did use Typo. Um, I forget the name of it. Basically, there's a there's a better Markdown draft app. So Notion does export Markdown, um, and I I do use Markdown to publish, but it doesn't have um, I don't like the way it edits stuff. So here I'm gonna add some random stuff and now I'm gonna unindent. This this would used to be broken. Basically some of the editing was uh, was not something I liked. So I needed a simpler interface. Um, and Typora, Typora, that's the, that's the tool I was using, Typora. This is a free open source tool um, that just gives you markdown and is not as complex as Notion. It only does markdown. So no no fancy blocks. Uh, when, you, when you slash, it doesn't try to search your whole database for you. It just does markdown. And it presents it nicely. So that's a really good writing app. I think anything that distracts you from <laughs> the the act of writing uh, can be a negative sometimes. Uh, so I use Tapora if you want to try to check it out. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah, it sounds like you just um, all these tools that you apply them greatly, or you have applied them. Um, in the past, and uh, you just have a great wealth of information. So thank, thanks for sharing. This is also, by the way, uh, you can use GitHub projects uh, for, for people, developers. Like this is literally my launch plan, T14, T minus 14, all the way to T minus one. Uh, yeah, that's how I plan it out, you know. Um, whatever tool, you can get pretty creative. And like, I, I find that my brain doesn't require one tool to, to rule them all. Um, so I can segment by like, okay, I'm working on book totally different set of tools than like regular knowledge ingestion. And somehow that works for me if, if, if you're okay with that, you know? Okay, thanks Maria. I wanna acknowledge Maria for uh, swinging by. The, the mentor sessions here have always had like this idea of support. And uh, I just wanna acknowledge, thank you so much Maria for, for uh, swinging by to help out. <laughs> okay, um, all right. I, I think we're, uh, we're over time. So that's, that's it as far as the present the pre-prepared questions have our concerns. You're welcome to email me at swix at swix.io. Uh, that's my email for uh, for sort of I guess if, if you're not comfortable asking questions here or you think of them later on, you're welcome to uh, email me here and I'll see you here again next week. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, next week is um, COD distill. So we're gonna go into distilling. And um, I really like I really like the progressive summarization idea. I don't necessarily do all the steps, uh, but I'm a fan. I'm a fan of like reviewing multiple times so that you you really get to the gist of uh, of a piece that you're you're writing about. So um, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you one example of that. So 
this is this is going to look super overwhelming to you, so please don't feel like you need to do this. Um, uh, I did have I did have an example of uh, you know people always think about this quality versus cons consistency trade off of like hey I want to produce but like do I do I produce on a regular schedule and trade off some quality or do I aim for the highest quality thing I can do and maybe not be so consistent with what I do um, and so I've been I actually collected three different podcast clips from Ali Abdal um, my uh, from Ali Abdal from Tim Urban. Uh, and then from James Clear uh, over here. And I synthesized them into this blog post. And that that actually did very well for me. I think um, the the post that I had, by the way, this is a this is a really cool extension if you if you work a lot with Twitter. Uh, I do use Twitter as my second brain sometimes. So um, so yeah, I think I think this this post did really well just because of the number of people that picked it up independently. Um, uh, you're doing the work by summarizing and synthesizing and comparing, right? So uh, I was able to find someone who stood up for consistency and made that case. I was able to find someone who stood up for quality and made that case. And then I, I just put together that debate and then offered some solutions to it uh, by synthesizing different resources together. Uh, and distilling is, is a key part of that work. So that's what we're gonna cover next week. Okay, thanks, Sean. Um, just, uh, if you don't mind, three quick sure. questions. Um, sorry, I did miss your uh, introductory session last week. So, um, Sean Wang, of course, that makes sense. W or rather YX, what does that stand for? <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh, English and Chinese uh, initials. I see. Got it. So okay. SW is English and then YX is Chinese. And I don't bother telling people what the YX is because they're not going to remember. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then this um, Twitter extension that you just mentioned, what, yeah. what is that? It's Twitter what beta. Uh, basically, here. How do I do this? Twitter data. No. no Where's it? There we go. Uh, so this is a unpublished Chrome extension just from a friend who wrote this. Essentially, whenever you go to some somebody's site, if you want to see the meta layer discussion around this, uh, here's the here's the blog post that I wrote about that. Oh, sorry. Um, ah, I'm working very fast and I, I just screwed up my, I just closed my chat window, so I don't know how to find the chat window. Uh, okay, okay, somebody find somebody find it. Somebody, somebody search this and post it. Um, but yeah, so uh, whenever you let's say let's say you want to find the power of blog posts. Whenever you're like, okay, I read this. I want to discuss it with people who've also read the, the thing. Uh, what do you do, right? You drop it in a Slack, you drop it in a Discord or something, and then you hope people have also read it. Uh, but what's better is you can actually just say like, okay, I'm going to click this Twitter, Twitter links thing and just plug into the stream of people who talk about this stuff. So Joe talked about it. So Sean talks about it. And then you can respond directly to them. Um, or you can see like the disagreements or you can, you can post about it, yeah. I don't know. I think it's it's very useful for for helping. And this is me talking about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's I think it's helpful. Uh, yeah. You can, also, you can also do this on Hacker News. So you know, if anyone has like a sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, you want to do that? Uh, that? That's me submitting it. <laughs> didn't really get it. Uh, sometimes you get a hit, and I, I just like plugging into the commentary layer because uh, it opens your mind as to like if people strongly disagree. If people, if people like you know have extra points that they want to make, um, I think Twitter as a meta commentary layer is a very interesting idea. Okay, um, last last question. I'm sorry. And sure. do you have to go? No, I don't. Okay. No, no. I'm just like you know, people. If, if you need to leave, just leave. Uh, this is just like we're we're into extra time. I, I like chatting. Last time we went for another thirty minutes. Okay, um, so because the topic of extension has come up and I've been just meaning to find the right opportunity to ask this to someone. Sure. Um, a lot of people uh, use the Evernote Clipper and similar extensions. And yeah. when you try to install them, be it on Firefox or um, Chrome, it does ask for permissions. And part of the permission is um, that it, it can have access to all your websites and whatnot. Um, and I'm not necessarily big on confidentiality or whatever security, but at the same time, it does, yeah, yeah. your data for all websites. So is that something that um, 
that's just standard or like, do you have any thoughts on that as a tech person? Uh, yeah, um, unfortunately it's pretty standard. Um, people, and, and this may be a slightly alarmist, you know, but you, at the end of the day, you just do have to trust them. Uh, the, the, the trust model for Chrome extensions um, is, is just that broken. <laughs> You just have to trust the publisher. If you if you don't trust them, then don't install it because they can. Uh, for example, it can, it can look safe at the time of of, uh, of publishing, and then you install it, and then they can secretly update it, um, and they might they might get you that way. So you just have to trust that they they won't ever abuse that. Um, yeah. I see. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, I had one more question. Uh, we're into extra time, so we're we're just just chilling, we're just chatting. Yanni, you're back. Okay, can you hear me, Sean? I can. Okay, awesome. So just question around, I really appreciate the idea of set your focus, uh, your focus on creation. I yeah. think that's what the whole point of the second brain. Now the question comes down, how do you, for, I just curious about your personal experience slash preference. How do you balance research and value creation in terms of time and energy perspective? So I do, for instance, when you're making a blog post, yes, um, there's a creation for sure, but definitely there's some a lot of research going on. It can be the pre-writing work. I'm wondering how you balance uh, that um, activities. Oh, okay. Does that um, question make sense? Yeah, of course. Um, the, basically, the, the research is just always ongoing in the back of my head, um, which is why I have this idea of pre-writing, right? This is passive. This is just a background process. It's always happening. And whenever something relevant comes up to a tell favorite problem or a project that I'm working on, then I'll just slot it right into there. Uh, I'll find, I'll, I'll pause what I'm doing and just go add that piece of information. So research is passive for me. And then when I make time to write, which is often like, you know, probably a Saturday when I like, I have like three, four hours open. Um, I think I'm, I'm trying to move to mm. like one hour a day before work. I think that I think that'd be a really good model for me, but just quite yes. honestly, quite honestly, I don't do that right now. Um, but you should have everything in place. So David Perel calls this start from abundance. Perel, start from abundance. Um, I don't really like the way you phrase this. Um, uh, writing. Yeah, start with abundance. There we go. How to cure writer, writer's block. There we go. All right. Um, so you can you can take his his uh, his word for it, but essentially just uh, have the have the write have the research as a background process, and then when you write, just write. Um, you can of course improvise and research here, uh, but if you do too much of that, then you will not end up publishing. <laughs> so you should. I totally um, get it. Do that. Yeah, um, I do have Thank the same process. So by the way, uh, you know when you publish because it's a digital document. Um, digital garden terms of service. So I have this idea of a digital garden terms of service. Like when you publish, you can you, you have the right to be to update it as you go along, right? So as long as you, it's a contract with your with your uh, with your readers is very clear, then uh, people won't expect you to be complete and you're not promising to be complete. You can even insert disclaimers. So I've been starting to insert disclaimers as well. Uh, so for example, stuff like here, I think I have a disclaimer here. So you can have like this, where you can say like, blah, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back from it. It's not fully formed yet. <clears throat> Devin Zugel has this idea of uh, epistemic origin. So she'll, she'll tell you up front the kind of work that she put into the post, you know, is it high, is it high confidence? Is this a high confidence post or is it just a theory? Uh, that's epistemic mm. status. And then the amount of effort that was put into it. Is this just a random thought or is this like the result of three years of research? Uh, and that sets the, sets the tone for people so that they don't get upset. Right. Especially if you have a lot of readers, they're like, uh, fuck you, like you, you know, you're, uh, you're like <laughs> that expert um, and you didn't consider all these, co these concepts. Um, and you should be open about that. I just, I don't like the word epistemic because it sounds very pretentious. So I just, I just simplified it to disclosure. Um, and I, I, I tried to make that, make that a thing. Um, yeah. Thank you. Just one last follow up question. So I'm trying to map that blogging whole process to the paramodal. So for instance, at the, all the passive activity going on for research, I can see 
based on my knowledge, you will go to the resources. But when that, let's say that content for specific blog posts is filled like ready for 80%, that I think I can I can see that I can convert that blog post yeah. for that particular topic to a project. Is it yeah. how you also yeah. kind of organize it? I see. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Sean. No worries. Um, I have another thing which I, you know, after you publish, there's a really interesting conversation you can have with your readers. You should, you should not think about it as like a one-to-many thing. It should be like a back and forth. Um, so I think it's, I call this annealing. Uh, I almost included this in my slides, but I didn't. Uh, but essentially like when you, uh, where's, my, where's my image? Ah, there we go. Okay. So when you, when you have the idea for a post, right? Um, you're like researching, 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 like accumulating knowledge, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then, and then you're, and then towards the end, when you're, when you're ready to write, you just do the sprint of writing and then you have this draft. Maybe you have a group of friends that are peer reviewing. So you're workshopping this idea and I have a separate post on that. Um, and then you publish, but right after you publish, you have a bunch of public feedback and you can actually have a conversation with them and your, your post continues to have increasing quality because uh, you have a conversation with readers. It gives people an incentive to respond to you quickly uh, because they'll be shot at, they'll be mentioned. Um, uh, this one I didn't have it, but uh, people mention I you know I, I shout people out when they when they respond. Um, yeah, it's just a really good model of uh, of uh, don't don't think of it, about it as a single single game. Uh, there's there's multiple stages to this. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Yanni. Um, yeah, uh, I'll take I'll take one more question that, that if someone had had them. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Benjamin, okay, says use different browsers for different things. That's a pretty smart move. Yeah, have multiple browsers. That's, that's a good security tip. Sam Wong. Question from Sam Wong. I do a lot of YouTube on iPad and have taken screen capture. Is there a method to sort them into different projects and areas? Ever know they want to notice my cards? I have no idea. YouTube on iPad and screen captures. Who, who, does, who does like video? Video nuance. I don't really. I take. I take a. Take a I take a timestamp. Um, so yeah. The, does anyone have have, uh, have thoughts on YouTube or iPad screen captures? Like part of the, uh, what's your toolkit? Yeah, part of the capture toolkit. You know, one of the six is. Uh, audio and video transcription. Uh, I, I just admit I haven't cracked it. Thanks, Yanni. Thanks for coming by. Um, yeah. Uh, so part of part of your toolkit is audio and video transcription, and I only do audio. Uh, I don't do video. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this uh, what the tools are, but you can check out the tools that people are using here. Uh, Sonics.ai, I guess. I don't know. I haven't tried. I haven't tried these. <clears throat> Notion, YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I, I I do a lot of time steps. So these are my podcast notes. You know, I'll do like uh, here's here's the what I want to feature, and here's the, it's thirty six minutes in. That's that's essentially the the extent of work that I do. <laughs> Probably no taking. It's really crappy, but at the same time, I'm very minimalist in the way that I do this stuff. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Sam. Okay. Well, um, I think I think that's it. I don't see any other hands up. Um, and uh, We've gone over time. So you're welcome to ask me questions uh, through email again, if I can find it, uh, success6.io. Uh, and if not, we'll meet again next week and talk about distilling. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 I'm going to hang around and uh, say hi to people or say bye. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Thanks for all the questions, everyone. It really helps to make this not a monologue. Uh, recording will not be shared widely. Uh, this is for me to improve myself because I, I'm trying to improve as a mentor and a facilitator. I'll just say all those speaking gigs that you do, it definitely shows in your presentation. So you do quite well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do more. Um, yeah, this is so. For those who, who are speakers, this is what happens when you have an active speaking schedule and no time to update them. So these are these are the talks that I do. So these are all my talks. But uh, I haven't updated them since December. And 
These are all the talks I haven't added yet. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I need to, I need to go make myself, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I need to update my own, my own document, documentation. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you want to do something well, do it a lot. And I don't think I do it very well. I have a lot of ums and ahs. I speak at roughly about 10 ums a minute. And that's not very good, I think. So trying to get- Yeah, no, I think um, your sort of weapon is, um, what you might call it? Quantity. Um, volume. <laughs> huh? Quantity, yes. Exactly, I was just gonna say volume, yeah. So I think you, be it writing or be it speaking, I, I feel like that's how you're going about things. And the more you do it, the better you get. Yeah. Um, just you're, you're, you're finding the time to do everything or that's just the discipline that you've developed over the years, but it's, it's pretty cool. It, it's funny because yeah, you can think about it as discipline, but you can also think about it as just being less perfectionist, right? Like I'm just lowering the bar on like what I, what I do in order to do more of it. And I think you also notice when you, when you, when you have speakers or you think about speakers, um, well, there, there are two things. So one is when you think about the, the greatest speeches in the world, the, the, Steve Jobs and the, uh, you know, they have very pre prepared speeches, but then when they speak off the cuff, they have all the ums and ahs, they have the false starts and uh, ramble, ram random rambles. So you don't have to be the best speaker in the world, but you can, you just have to be functional. You can, you can get a message across. You can think while you talk, so you can plan ahead what you're, what you're about to say. Uh, and the other point I was gonna make is that writing helps you speak better because it helps you rehearse things and rehearse the phrasing and, and, and think about structure. So uh, I have this quote in, in, the, in my writing chapter, about, I can't, I'm not gonna look it up right now, but um, when, you, when you write, when you have written down something um, and then you speak about it later, whether it's a conference talk or a workshop or like a podcast or just a regular one-on-one -on -one chat, um, you just sound smarter because you've written about it. So you should write more and you will magically become a better speaker. <laughs> That makes sense. What, um, when did you have the thought of writing a book on the specific topic that you have written on the coding manual or whatever manual it is? Like when did that sort of come up? I have an exact date. Uh, so I think it's here. So you, you can see how often I use Twitter as my second brain. Um, so, uh, Daniel, who's a friend now, uh, tweeted this. If you're tempted by this, my uh, so so Naval tweeted this. I, there's never been a better time to launch a digital product. This is April last year, which is like the death of the the, the recession, right? Um, and then they were like, and this guy, this this advice was like, uh, create a small product, something you can finish in two weeks and charge ten dollars for it. So I decided uh, that I was going to do that. Um, I think I did it here. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know where, where I actually quoted it, but essentially, I have. I have that's the exact date that I started, April tenth, twenty twenty twenty. Uh, I decided that I was going to launch this this book, and then uh, it just carried on from there. Um, and uh, originally was gonna was gonna try to finish it in two weeks, like you said, uh, and it blossomed into two months because I found that I had so much content to 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 share. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, books. It, it, I hear that it tends to happen to books because people, especially when they're first-time authors, want to squeeze everything in. Um, I think for for second and third books, you tend to try to focus in a bit more because you realize that no one, nobody's going to finish the book um, if it's if it's a huge tome. Like my, I think my thing st stands at about like five hundred something pages right now. Mm. No, great work, great work. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> I do, I do encourage you. I want to say, yeah, hey. as a senior developer, I read your book and uh, I found that it was like very well resourced. Just wanted to, oh, thank um, you. It. Like <laughs> it was the resources that like you were quoting people like John Cutler or people that are like, I don't know, I've been doing it for five years and I was like, wow, this is already what I'm currently reading at the moment. So yeah, uh, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no manual for that, you know? So um, yeah, I, I really think that we should have a manual and I guess this is my attempt, right? So yeah, the bibliography, people have, uh, people really liked it. So I tried to condense it into like, this is the reading list for everyone entering this industry, you know? Um, and it's 69 pages long, nice. <laughs> um, 
then yeah, people should, um, I don't know, like when, when you enter an industry, nobody like sits you down and goes like, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> you were talking yeah, about, here's everything else. You have a CS degree and they can say, okay, I know how to, you know, what a binary tree is, but then uh, you're like, okay, actually what you have to do is you have to take this one website and you need to change it from cookies to JWTs or something. And also uh, you need to do it in a, like the day-to-day -day is so different. Um, it is, it is. Ah, it totally is. Um, well, well, thanks for, thanks for talk, uh, sharing about your experience. I really like that. Um, okay, great. Uh, I, I've, I've dragged this on longer than I should, but uh, thanks everyone for, for joining. Uh, I know it's a precious part of your weekend, but we'll see each other next week. Bye. <laughs>